So now we're going to solve a rational inequality. We're going to do so by graphing. And before we do this the right way, let's look and see how to not do this. So how do we do this the wrong way? It looks very tempting to multiply by the denominators, x minus 3 and x plus 1. What would this look like if I did that? It would look like uh, this. 5 times x plus 1 is greater than 3 times x minus 3. This would be okay if there was an equal sign. Why is this bad with an inequality? Well, if you multiply by a negative, you need to flip your inequality. We multiply by this term. Is this positive or negative? I don't know. Depends on what x is. Is this positive or negative? I don't know. It also depends on what x is. So I would need to very carefully write down um, what would make x positive here. If x was 3 or more, this would be positive. And so if x was greater than 3, this inequality would stay. If x was uh, less than 3, this inequality would flip. But it's even more complicated because if x was less, uh, greater than negative 1, then it would stay. And if x was less than negative 1, this would flip. And if it flipped and flipped, it would get back to where it started. And if it flipped once, it would change around. And there'd basically be four cases I would have to worry about, depending on what x was. That would be really tricky. So let's do this using some good math. What am I allowed to do and not worry about flipping an inequality? I can always subtract. So let's do that. So I don't have to worry about what x is. It's going to work out just fine. Uh, this inequality won't change. Well, how do I subtract? You need common denominator. So there's nothing in common, so I need to multiply this fraction by x minus 3. Divided by x minus 3, multiply this fraction by x plus 1 over x plus 1. So if we're going to multiply, we have 5x plus 5 divided by x plus 1 x minus 3 minus 3x minus 9 divided by x plus 1 x minus 3. So 5x minus 3x is 2x. 5, it looks like minus 9, but it's minus a negative 9. 5 plus 9 is 14. And we can factor a 2 out. So just like with polynomials, I'm going to give this function a name, and we'll call it, we're in rational, so we'll call it r of x. So now we have some uh, x-intercept and some vertical asymptotes to worry about. And let's write down, we'll go domain. So really graphing this r of x function now, and the final answer will be, when is this rational function greater than zero? So domain, don't use negative one, don't use positive three. Negative infinity, comma, negative 1, union, negative 1, positive 3, union, 3, infinity. All right, we'll go vertical asymptotes next. x equals negative 1, x equals 3, they're both cross. And x-intercepts, there's only 1, and it is negative 7. Now, I like to write my x-intercepts uh, as points because I do not want to confuse them with vertical asymptotes. If you just read this, 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 this may seem like a vertical asymptote. So we're going to stick with writing them as points like we did before to avoid confusion. And we get another cross here y intercept what is r of zero plug in zero we get two times zero plus seven is seven one negative three this is gonna be an ugly number fourteen thirds negative fourteen thirds sorry that's my cat negative fourteen thirds get out of here negative fourteen thirds is our y value. Okay, so we got our y intercept and behavior. Don't forget that. Oh my goodness. All 
All right, end behavior. We want to throw out small uh, values, the plus seven, the plus one, the minus three. So we're gonna get rid of all that. And behavior. So it's gonna be a y equals two, x, x, x. So the x will cancel and we have two over x, y equals two over x denominator wins. So what does that mean? We get y equals zero. And let's see, just need to graph now. So y equals zero, vertical asymptote, uh, horizontal asymptote y equals zero. I'd like to just be a little bit lazy. If I know it's a uh, horizontal asymptote y equals zero, I just sort of extend the x-axis with some dotted lines. And I could write y equals zero on both sides. Vertical asymptotes, negative one, positive three. And our, let's see, did I not, somewhere, x-intercept, negative seven. We'll pretend this is the scale, negative seven, y-intercept, where is exactly negative 14 thirds? I don't know, it's pretty close to negative 15 thirds, negative five, so we'll just say it's right there. All right, so now we will connect all this together. Neg uh, we'll start, let's, it is impossible to start over here on the right side. Uh, because I don't know if I should go from this y equals zero to the bottom or the top. I could plug in a y value somewhere over there, uh, but instead let's just avoid that side altogether and we'll start. I also don't know if I should go up over here or down to approach the y axis. So let's go from here, this x intercept to the vertical asymptote. I also don't know whether to go up or down. So let's go from the y-intercept to the vertical asymptote. How do I know from the y-intercept it does not go upwards? If it went upwards, I would have another x-intercept I'd have to cut through here. So it would definitely go downwards. You don't get crossing and bouncing on y-intercepts. What would happen if I got a bounce, it would come backwards and I'd fail the vertical line test. So it's gonna have to keep going through. Now I do not have an x-intercept, so I cannot go up and approach the asymptote, the vertical asymptote up here. So I am forced to go back down. Now I'm going to use the cross of this vertical asymptote to come back out of this side. And I have to approach the horizontal asymptote. Now over here, I have to cross again. I got that from our uh, negative one cross behavior there. I have a cross x-intercept, so I will cross the x-intercept. Now I will be going down here, but I also have to approach the y equals zero horizontal asymptote as well. So here's our final graph. And I wanted to solve, when is r of x greater than zero? Well, it's not okay to equal zero, so we're not going to use that x value. And this was, remember, negative seven. So I wanna know when is it greater than zero. So I will highlight the parts of the graph that I want to use. So we'll be using that portion there and this entire part of the curve here as well. So where, what x intervals do we have? Negative seven and negative one. Do not include this endpoint and you never include a vertical asymptote endpoint. And this was three, I didn't, yep, three, I didn't label it. So this is three all the way to infinity. So this will be our final answer for this inequality right here. Seems like a lot of work, but it is much better than trying to work through the algebra of what happens if things are positive and negative when you multiply. So this is how we're gonna be doing our rational inequalities.